Thanks for tuning in to Shooty School. In this video, we'll be learning about the Tap to Find feature in Easy Drummer 2. If you're looking for a beginner's video for Easy Drummer 2, I recommend watching my Easy Guide to Easy Drummer 2 video first, because here, I assume you've already watched my previous videos in this advanced series, so there's no need for an introduction or specifications. I'll link to those videos in the description. And do check out my channel Shooty School for more Easy Drummer 2 tutorials. Let's get started. The tap to find features primary function is to help you find ideas similar to what you literally tap out with your mouse or hardware. Tap to find is directly related to the search tab in Easy Drummer 2. What you create in it will produce results in the search tab search results window. But you can also record your own beats while quantizing in real time unlike the record function in the song track in which you quantize after you record. That might be a game changer for you. On the search tab, if you select a tap to find button, an interface launches showing a drum kit and some controls to help you record and tailor your beat. What is in your face 100% of the time is the sounding metronome, which gets old pretty quick if you spend some time in this panel. So if you go to the main program menu bar up here, select settings, and then metronome settings, you can adjust the two volume sliders here to quiet the metronome down to negative 12 dB among other metronome settings. If you can't hear this metronome while watching this video after I've made this change, just know that it's there and it's always playing when this window's open. These metronome volume settings will reset if you don't save your Easy Drummer 2 file. Now I can concentrate a little better when I have the Tap to Find window open. Note that if I hit the X button in the upper right or the Cancel button down here, it will close the Tap to Find window. The metronome is sounding to the tempo you should start playing to when you're ready. The tap to find feature is standing by to record your performance once you hit your first note. This blank window in the bottom center area is an empty two measure long MIDI block in which your performance will be recorded. I'll click on the kick drum. Tap to find will record that note in the first measure and start your two measure long recording loop. Typically, you might just perform a kick and snare pattern if you're only looking to find similar MIDI library search results and not compose an original beat. As you can hear, the kick drum is on the one of the first measure. I'll finish a kick and snare pattern. Now I can click on show results and we'll back out of the tap to find window into the search tab and see similar results populate the search results panel. Looking in the matching column will indicate how similar your MIDI library beats are to the one you just tapped out. This seems to be the primary purpose of Tap to Find, to help you find similar beats. This field right here is the MIDI drop zone for Tap to Find. The beat we just made is still loaded into it. You can hit play to hear it. You can right click to copy it. Paste any attribute you may have already copied. Delete it from the drop zone or send this beat to the song creator, which I have a separate video for on my channel. This orange X button will also delete it. And with an empty MIDI drop zone, you can load any beat into the tap to find feature by dragging it to the drop zone and then clicking tap to find. I'll hit cancel. And since I want my original beat back that we created, I'll hit the back button a few times until I find it. There it is. Let's load it back into Tap to Find and continue working. Let's say this is too fast to record to. Let's adjust the tempo slider down a little. We hear the metronome and our beat slow down. Take note that this only adjusts the recording tempo. Your project tempo will remain the same when you close Tap to Find. Now, when we tap the drums to this metronome, your hits will automatically lock to the closest eighth notes as it says down here, quantize eighth notes. I'll play some 8th note hi-hats. If I want open hi-hats, I'll click this button. My playing was quantized perfectly. If I want to play 16th notes, I'd have to change the quantization to 16th notes first, otherwise the 16th notes would just get reassigned as 8th notes, like this. Did I lose my 16th notes? No, I didn't. They're still there. 
I'll change quantize to 16th to reveal them since I did play them. Pretty cool. You could also completely tame a beat by selecting quarter note, which would disable anything faster than a quarter note like this. A great option to test different feels out instantly. I'll hit this X button to start over and reselect 8th note quantize. As for accuracy performing with clicking your mouse, it's not that easy for me to play with good timing. We we'll use hardware to trigger the tap to find feature in a bit. My best advice would be with the mouse is use a slow tempo for your performance. You can always speed it up later when you're done. Let's keep looking at the quantize options. If you select none for quantizing, you're probably going to be in a lot of trouble unless you're Mike Portnoy or you have a lot of time and patience to get it right. With no quantizing in mind, if I tap a beat like this, Tap to Find will always remember my original unquantized performance. Now I switch quantized to none after I recorded with 8 note quantization to show my original performance. It's not sounding as attractive, and I can see the tiny orange dots rearranged depending on the quantized settings. If I switch to quarter note with my 8th note style performance, all of my 8th notes will move to the nearest quarter note. Switching to 16th notes will reveal that I didn't play my 8th notes tight enough and they've been reassigned to the closest 16th note. It's not what I intended to play, but maybe that works after all. In switching to 30 seconds, the same issue happens except it assigns the notes to the closest 30 second, which may sound completely unacceptable. I'll clear this beat by hitting X. If you're recording 30 second notes tapping with your mouse, you may want to turn the tempo down as low as it goes. For me, I couldn't do this well with tapping my mouse. Also, an advanced note, which is kinda humorous. When recording, only with the tap to find feature, you can also right click on the mouse as well as left click. You could theoretically alternate click like this. For me, it's insanely sloppy. But maybe you have the right mouse for it. Or maybe this is now a game and not music making anymore. Regardless, if you do this, take note that both the left and right mouse clicks can't be down at the same time unlike real drums. So concentrate on lifting your fingers quickly to register the next hit. I'll clear this beat, reset tempo, and set my quantize to eighth notes. Now I'm gonna use my MIDI controller for the next example to show compatibility. If your computer has recognized your external hardware, then you should be able to see it here in the Settings, Audio MIDI Setup, MIDI Device Menu. Check my channel on setting up external devices with Easy Drummer 2 if you're having any problems. Here's my keyboard right here. I will continue the lesson but now performing into Tap to Find with my hardware, which is so much easier than my mouse. One thing to keep in mind is when you record with your mouse, you record at maximum velocity 100% of the time. When you're using your hardware, you're now capable of recording dynamics depending on your performance, like this. Now I want to talk about a technical issue with incorporating triplets since the tap to find feature can only quantize with or without triplets, but not both, as you can see a divide line in the quantize menu. In other words, your whole beat needs to derive from straight notes or triplets, but not the combination of. But there are workarounds, so stay tuned in for the details. When it comes to combining triplets over my straight non-triplet drum beats, I may go straight to my piano roll in my DAW and edit them in there. Let's try to work with them in Easy Drummer 2 though, so you understand its limitations, and we can also try and edit our triplets in so we don't have to leave the program. We're on my keyboard now, which is considered a MIDI controller. Let me get a straight beat with 8th note hi-hats, and a kick and snare pattern for the first measure and a half. We're quantized to eighth notes, and this sounds fine. Here's an example of me playing eighth note triplets on the toms at the end while quantized to eighth notes. As you can hear, it moved my toms to four straight eighth notes instead of the six eighth note triplets I performed. Here's my performance unquantized, and notice my toms being more triplet sounding. 
It's too sloppy to use as is though. Let's change the quantization to 8th note triplets. Now we have our tom triplet hits, but my hi-hats have been reshuffled around into an interesting syncopation. They're not my straight 8th notes anymore. No matter which quantize option I choose, I cannot quantize a straight beat with triplets played over it or vice versa. Let me click straight 8th note quantize and then I'll hit show results to take a break from tab to find. If you do not understand the difference between straight 8th notes and 8th note triplets, watch my video Introduction Accounting and Note Duration right now. It's time you get this knowledge in your brain so you can be more productive with your music creating tools. I hope you understand the straight verse triplet issue we're having now because I will show you a workaround real quick. Besides using your DAW's piano roll to manually put the triplets where you want them, I'll use Easy Drummer to make this happen in two steps. This explanation is brief and is covered more in detail in one of my song track or editing videos. Let's drag our straight eighth note file from the tap to find MIDI drop zone to our song track. Let's cut off the toms from the last two beats with the slice tool and delete them. Now we have our straight eighth note beat minus the toms. Let's clear the tap to find MIDI drop zone and open tap to find. Set quantizing to eighth note triplets and perform two beats of eighth note triplets on the toms. Now I hit show results to access this new file from the MIDI drop zone. I'll cut off and delete the empty space. Select my arrow tool and move it over. Let's hear if we got it finally. Cool. We've successfully created a beat from scratch using straight and triplet notes. I may select both blocks, right click and select merge to have a single MIDI block. I then may go to the browser tab and save this file into my user MIDI so I can access it later which is covered in detail in my advanced browser video. So the tap to find feature can do more than just help you find similar beats from your MIDI libraries. It is a cool little drum composing machine and being able to quantize in real time is really going to be a bonus for any non-drummers using the program. Lastly about the tap to find feature, you can hit different zones on your snare and ride like this. And if you don't want to start over by hitting the small orange X button, click the menu underneath it and just remove a single instrument if you don't like it or simply want another shot at performing it, like this. I'll hit cancel. Let's say you like this MIDI file from your library, but want to manipulate it. You can drop it into the MIDI drop zone, hit the tap to find button and preview that file with different straight or triplet feels. And add and subtract to that beat. This is also a handy way to add a particular hit in case the edit play styles feature can't do it for you, which is covered in another one of my videos. Now you know how to use the tap to find feature and understand its limitations and strengths. If you're not worn out, continue on to my next advanced easy drummer video or take a break, decompress and hang out and just jam with easy drummer too. Come back to me when you're ready to rock. If you learned something today from this video, please like and subscribe. I have many more advanced with Easy Drummer 2 videos on my channel. Comments and corrections are always welcome below. Thanks for stopping by and rock on.